Hello and welcome to the Friday, November 11th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote about the difference between what he's calling observables and IOCs or indicators of a compromise. And the tool he's really using here to distinguish between the two is the Hive. The Hive is an open source sort of threat intelligence platform that allows you to aggregate different feeds and add context to some of the data that you may observe, these observables uh, in your logs. And I've talked about this before in some of the threat feeds that we offer here at the Storm Center. Also, I always call them add color uh, to your logs. But the real issue here is that you essentially try to cut down on the noise and you are trying to prioritize events that really matter. And that's really sort of what that distinction is between observable, which maybe just some random hit to your firewall doesn't really matter, and an indicator of compromise, something that's actually validated and something that's linked to a specific threat. And Google fixed an interesting a lock screen bypass in Android with its latest monthly security update. We had uh, in the recent past some vulnerabilities in Android and iOS that allowed sort of a partial uh, lock screen bypass where you could see like uh, recent messages or uh, photos or the address book. But this is actually a complete unlock of uh, the phone. What is required here is that uh, you replace the SIM card in the phone with one that the attacker owns and knows and then lock the pin for the SIM card, basically enter the wrong pin three times then if that happens you have the option to unlock your sim card with a puck code and well once you enter the correct puck code of course the attacker would know that for their own sim card the phone magically completely unlocks this is of course a big problem given that this sort of bypasses any kind of biometric or other security that you set up for your phone it's not dependent on the victim actually setting up a pin for their sim card because the attack scenario here is that the attacker gets a hold of the phone and is able to swap the sim cards as a result this may actually be one of the cases where an all electronic sim uh, is a bit more secure but of course the real problem here is not whether or not the sim can be locked or not but that the phone lock screen can be bypassed and the attacker then has full access to the phone this vulnerability affects at least some pixel devices not clear what other phones are affected by this vulnerability the security researcher who found the vulnerability, David Schütz, uh, reported back in June and was actually awarded a $70,000 bounty for this vulnerability. And remember how this week we got the sudden updates for iOS and macOS, and I was kind of wondering why we got uh, these uh, updates fixing just two very specific vulnerabilities in libxml, kind of suspecting that these vulnerabilities are already being exploited. Well, it turns out they may not be already exploited, but the libxml project did two days ago make public the underlying bug report about this vulnerability that does include proof of concept code. Now, the proof of concept code is doing just a segmentation fault, so it's a denial of service exploit. There is more to it to actually exploit it and get the code execution, but uh, this may have uh, triggered uh, Apple into making this update in order to preempt the release of any actual remote code execution exploits. As so often, this vulnerability was already discovered by Google's project Zero. And you know, I do love these vulnerabilities in uh, ancient or pretty old software. Well, uh, we do have an interesting one in Xterm and actually somewhat related for exploitability, a VI. 
And well, you probably know by now that I love these vulnerabilities in widely used uh, old software and we have an interesting, pretty easy to exploit uh, remote code execution vulnerability in Xterm. Xterm, a common terminal being used on uh, Unix Linux uh, systems. And what happens here is that there is a character sequence that you can send that tries to use a particular font. If the font does not exist, the font name is being echoed back on the terminal, which then essentially allows an attacker to inject characters into the terminal. And uh, these characters are terminated with a control G that can then be used in particular together with VI for uh, code execution. There is a public uh, exploit for this. All it takes is to cat the particular uh, file that was created here as part of the public exploit and uh, it will uh, just touch a file but you could very easily replace this touch command with any other command. So to exploit this, you would just have to trick a victim into using cat within xterm in order to open that uh, malicious file. And since CAD is often uh, sort of considered a safe option to open files, this could certainly be exploitable. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Uh, just a reminder, uh, the Internet Storm Center is now also present on uh, Mastodon, the uh, newish social uh, media platform. We do have an account, sans underscore ISC, at the infosec.exchange server. Thanks for listening, and this is it for today, and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.